There's the little sanitizer. Hey! And there we are. Here we are. Overtime. BJOT! He can say that. I can't, because when I say it, it's welcome to BJOT, which sounds yes. really ridiculous. So here we are. Remember, like, smiley face, laughing face when Dave and I say clever things, which you might just might as well start clicking now and just keep clicking. Yeah. Because we are clever Be mm -hmm. very clever. I have good news for Brian. What? So make sure to share us, like us, do all that because it helps and it gets the word out. Comment. Um, comment. Yeah, let us know where you're at. What are you doing? So Nicholas says he lives in Amish country. Was I was just there yesterday. It was awesome. People are so nice. He says he will gladly take Brian as an ambassador. I'm just saying, he got a lot of shout-outs. <laughs> Did Dave mention that on the air, that if he's elected governor, I he would appoint me ambassador to Amish country. I'll only take that position, Dave, if it's paid. You have to shave your mustache, hey. though. And just, just the, the mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay, so hat. to our perhaps to our own peril, we have invited Dave Safransky mm -hmm. to join us for this discussion. Janelle, you're going to have to set this up because it's very female-oriented, and I don't want to get in trouble. Go ahead. Yeah. So the question, <laughs> at, at 6 o'clock, we were talking about an um, uh, uh, influential woman said the importance of marrying your equal and in that acknowledging and welcoming strength from the woman, the wife, and how you can st it shouldn't challenge a man's leadership. And so a listener texted in a question and said, how is one to deal with a strong woman whose husband seems indifferent on many issues and most often defers to her for decisions? How is the woman supposed to be submissive? And so part of your thing with this is how did you even get there right yeah because and before we get there before we all get in trouble and get everyone mad at us remember it's dave's fault if you have any questions <laughs> uh, hey jennifer hello she's hi, the jennifer. first one to jump in today mike hi mike what's up mike mike uh anita is also the first lady of hope Alliance bible church is also appointing me ambassador to amish country <laughs> only if there's unlimited buffets of amish food yeah. hi, gravy. gravy hi deborah okay. hi paul Hey, everybody. Oh, look at You're already doing the laughing things. Look, that was for me. No, because you're so funny, right? <laughs> yeah, right? Laughing emoji. Go. Yeah. There it is. And there's nothing. Okay. Uh, so, so okay, the, the question one more time, and then we're going to oh, tackle wow. this. Okay, so how does a strong woman whose husband is indifferent, seems indifferent to many issues, and most often defers to her for decisions... How is this woman still supposed to submit? So here's my question. Why does he keep deferring to her? Yeah. I, I There's a the stereotypical situation where it's like, honey, where do you want to go for dinner? And she says, oh, I don't care. So then he says, how about Applebee's? No, I was just there. How about Longhorn? No, I had a bad experience. How about, you know, and all these, well, you do care. So would you just stop lying to me and tell me where you want to go so I can take you there? Right. Because I just don't want you to be mad at me. <laughs> Those kind of situations <laughs> can lead a man to defer because he knows it's going to blow up in his face anyway. Be careful it's not a situation like that, that, that you're not having strong opinions and then not expressing them because you want to submit, but then not being happy with his ruling because you've got these strong opinions, you never said anything. Deborah's tuning in from East Lake. Hi, Heather. We want to hear from you. What what advice would you give this listener? Deborah's saying you should submit just because he's the head of the household. But part of the issue is when you're a strong woman, you need a strong man. And so if you're going to be the head of the household, you got to lead. And if you keep saying, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? I mean... No, but if I'm see, gonna submit, you gotta tell me. Okay, where are we going? What are we doing? It's also, but to go with what the wise and wonderful Ron Eastwood already said. Yes. Well, you need to try. No, no. Ron. Yes. Ron said. <laughs> uh, passive aggressive. There's, there's just, it's a stereotype, but passive aggressive behavior, I think, is a breeding ground for a passive response. Yeah. Because you know what someone is doing is they want something, but they won't say what it is. And they're going to make your life crazy until you figure it out. So all you do is just go, okay, I clearly you want something. You're not going to say what it is. Mm -hmm. Just do whatever you want, okay? I don't want to do this again. Isn't it possible that passive-aggressive behavior from a wife could lead to that? I do think so. Um, my issue with you, as always, is... <laughs> 
Did you hear that? My issue. She just I just go straight. We're just going to go straight Tell to the issue. Tell them what you said. They missed it. <laughs> my issue with you? No, my problem with you is that it's my always... My problem with you. It's always the <laughs> women's worse. the woman's fault. And what you're saying is, maybe you he's like that because of the way you, you've engaged him. Can we talk a little bit and help? Because you're supposed to help. That's what the mic is for. We're out here being used by the this Lord. Facebook. It's Can different. You <laughs> Can we don't you have to be helpful. <laughs> Can you challenge the men? Because there there is such a thing as men that are passive. Yeah. It could be because they grew up with passive men. It could be because they grew up with strong women, strong moms. Sometimes it happens when you grow up with a single mom. So sometimes men have to step it up. One of the things I always say about Len, that he's awesome, is in handling me, being strong, he knows when it's time to say, no, I'm taking this. And sometimes it takes a man to say, no, I got this, you know, and not just be like, well, give me permission to come. Okay, but, so but I'll, give it, I'll give it to y'all. You actually said one of the important things is that oftentimes strong mothers create passive sons. Absolutely. Right. So, but now you're mad at me because I'm blaming women again. And here's the deal. In society, no, that is a these, thing. You make it the yeah. thing. Do, do you know why I do? Okay. It's because I tend towards hyperbole. Everybody knows that about me. I tend towards the extreme to try to prove a point. But usually, how do these discussions go? It's the typical comparing Mother's Day and Father's Day. Mother's Day, moms are the best thing that's happened ever. Let's clap for you at Father's Day. You could do better. So usually, society and the church says it's the man's fault. And when anyone dares to say a woman could change, everybody goes crazy. So I'll be the one that says, yeah, you know what? Maybe she needs to change. Yes. And you can all hate me for it. But guess what? If men have to do something different, so do women. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. It's been a great day. Me, I want no, I want to hear what. First of all, Paul, yeah, you're my dude. He says yes, Janelle. That's a man saying yes. We got to step it up. There are passive men, and you got to own some of it. It's not just oh my yeah. mom, or you. It's sometimes it's like no, I have to step it up. Honestly, I'm speaking for Dave. So go ahead. Dave. <laughs> Dave wanted you to say no. That. Yes, I would love. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Rob. No, Rob. Rob says, yes, Brian. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is why we need men's groups in church, and we need um, mentoring in church for men and for women, because I, I think we have two distinct missions here. One, one for the men is to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Well, that's a very tall order. It's going to be very difficult to do, but we're called to do that, and for women, it's to submit. And I've always thought that if I was doing my job, if I was loving my wife like Christ loved the church to the best of my ability, it's really between my wife and the Lord for her to submit. And people will submit when they feel safe. People will submit when they feel like there's a partnership here that, love, that they can trust your decisions, right? Yeah. So as the man, I think you have to prove that you're going to make decisions that are in the best interest of your family. Yeah that are not going to be selfish, that are going to drive your family forward, and then I think people will feel comfortable submitting to whatever that means in your relationship. And for a strong woman and a strong man, if they're married together, I think that they're going to be, uh, there's going to be times where they butt heads a little bit, uh, but at some point, a husband is going to say, obviously you feel very strong about this, stronger than I do, let's try it your way. And there are going to be times when that woman says, Obviously, you feel strong about this, stronger than I do. Let's do it your way. And I think that's the partnership of marriage. It's very difficult. It takes discernment to get there. It takes time. And it takes people around you kind of coaching you along the way. Because it's very easy. And, and there's this um, kind of perception that submission means you're going to do what I say. That's submission. That is not submission. That's not submission. That's ogring. That's kind of lording over people. Submission is uh, something very different than that. And it's going to be different in every marriage, and we have to allow for those changes. But if you want to be a strong man, you have to be led by strong men. So there's nobody that's uh, in a position of power that hadn't been led there. Yeah. Right? So yeah. you need people yeah. around you to help you with that. It's, Teresa it's says, wow, 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 wise relationship words from Dave. What? <laughs> truly is amazing advice. <laughs> Jennifer. I love this. So it's a challenge to you, Brian. Well, but what we're I wanted blaming... to say before you do that, though, is that <laughs> okay. I was going to say exactly the same thing. As that. <laughs> he 
he always jumps in front of you all the time. Yeah, I just wanted them to know. So Jennifer says, sometimes passive men are passive because they had a strong mom who had to be strong because there was no man in the picture. Sometimes her wife is just a bully. Women can be bullies. Yes. I men think. can be bullies. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's talk about that. Go ahead. You want to talk about men? Let's talk about that. Women, Women can, can be bullies. bullies. Yes, I agree. Wives can be bullies. Yes. That's it? That's all you got? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do? What are you saying? So, yes, sometimes... Okay, let me take it a, 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 a slightly different direction then. I think some of this could also come from another aspect in which, as Dave rightly said, it's a misinterpretation of submission. Some people view submission as, if a man's leading, he's going to make every decision. What are we having for dinner? Honey, you're the head of the household. You should decide. What are we going for dinner? What time are we leaving for this? What are we... That is not it. Spiritual headship is not micromanaging every decision. No. Mm -hmm. And I married a brilliant woman, and she manages our life really well. Right. The spiritual headship is not a micromanaging every decision. It's In like fact, Deborah says. She says it's about the big issues, not the daily little That's right. Yeah. And so if your husband is yielding to you on a lot of daily issues, maybe it's because you're good at it. Yeah. And he respects you mm -hmm. and loves you. If you want him to make every decision, that's annoying. You know what? Um... Uh, I know there's bullies or whatever. The general population of women are not bullies. And I, I just wanted to talk about... You no, know, A lot of times women she's step right. in because yeah, there's, a, right. there's a void. So you can okay. have a man just not there or you can have a man that's there and passive. And then you see a lot of women yeah. looking like they're trying to run things. But it's like if somebody doesn't do it, then you got to pick up the slack. And I yeah. think it would help if men... Acknowledged that and said, you know what? I have to step it up. It's yes. on me. It is not leadership as a whole to not own it. Like you're putting it on somebody else. Yeah, and no, you got to own it and say, I can, I can do something. But there's two ways to address that. Okay, because we've talked about this before, that the, the only thing you can do is change yourself. Right. And a wife who obsesses about this and says, okay, honey, I wish you would just step up and do something. Why don't you just get it lead? I need you to lead. He's not going to do it. Brian, I what? have a personal example of this. Can Go I ahead. say something, though? Because you've been asked to be a governor and senator. Somebody wants you to write a book. They're just saying, wow, People Yvonne says, He's not that this great. is <laughs> awesome. Dave, they, those, know you as well as they said, Dave, those words should be written down. It would solve a lot of marriage problems. Call so Moody Publishers yeah. and tell them. Yeah. Right Moody, idea. that's there right. You so what, are you, what were you going to well, share? Well, early on in my career, uh, we, were, we were newly married, and... I confused making money with leadership. I wanted to make, I hung around with people who were rich. I worked with people who were rich. And I thought leadership was making money and not spending time with my family. I, I basically left everything to my wife unfairly to run while I went out and I did my thing. And I would make up the time on vacation. And all I worried about on vacation was getting back to work because I had to make money. And it took a pastor sitting on my front step to say, Dave, we need to talk. Uh, before I change. And so a lot of guys confuse what being the head of a household is. That's right. yeah. And it's easy to do in America today because we value things. Yeah. And until you value people over things, you value relationship over things, you're going to make the same mistake that I made. And it almost cost me my marriage. It almost cost my family. So I could see why there's a void that's being filled by a lot of women because guys are out, we're working, we're trying to provide everything and nice vacations and nice cars and private school and all this stuff. And that's when not, really, yeah. that's not the point. Yeah, it's It not, can't be the it's point. It's not leadership. Jennifer leadership. says, I hate to agree with Brian, but I do on that point. She's struggling. You hate it, but here you are. Paul says, men need to lead with strength as example, and sometimes being passive in the right situation is strength. But In the relationship, both men and women have their role. Go ahead. You were gonna I, it's, a, it's a hard truth that we all have to swallow, but the only thing you can do is change yourself. Yeah, exactly. So, so what would I say to this wife whose husband is too passive? She needs to find a way to actually yield in a way that's respectful and honoring. Like, so, for example, Kevin Lehman gave a great example with, with the dinner thing. Everybody's done this, right? Honey, where do you want to go out to eat? I don't care. Wherever you want to go. Well, let's get a burger. I just had a burger. Okay? So, so he says the best solution for a wife in this is to say, Honey, I don't really know where I want to go, but I could really use some Mexican food tonight. Could you help us find a great restaurant to go to? Every guy will go, absolutely. Why? Because he knows exactly what she wants, and he wants to please her. 
So he can figure it out. It's a way for him to win. And now he's not being passive. She's being a part of this thing, but he's still leading. Do you see? Like, yeah. Like she's yeah. going to have to not get mad and nag him and complain and wish he would do more. She's going to have to actually start to yield in a way that's respectful. I just got advice this week um, with that <laughs> from Dr. Julie. So my, my teenage boy wanted to have a party at the house. That is not lunch strength, navigating teens and all that. <laughs> so when I asked him, I'm confusing leadership with, okay, fine, babe. How do you want to deal? Yes or no, can you do it? And he said, I'm not good at this. You do it. I'm thinking if I take that, I'm, I'm, he's giving up leadership. And he's like, Janelle, I can't. I, I just, you do it. You're better at this. And so when I asked Dr. Julie Slattery, she said, there is unity and there is leadership there. He's telling you to go ahead and, and handle it. And so she said, as a supportive wife, what you do is you say, okay, what things are you like, I just need to make sure X, Y, Z gets done. Right. If it's like leave the house how you found it or whatever, then you can kind of make sure you you honor his concerns and then go with your leading with, okay, he can have the party and I'll make sure I honor your concerns. So I think it's what you're saying. You're right. Sometimes we confuse. I thought leadership is no, if you're uncomfortable, fine, we'll go your way. When he's telling me, no, you're better at this, just you decide. And you say leadership. yes or no. Yeah. yeah. That, a, a great boss does that. A great boss says to the employee, okay, you do that. I don't know the best move here. You, yeah. you, you make the call. I got your back. I hired you because you're good. Right. You see? Right. L oh, thanks. Good job, Brian. Team Brian. Man, you all are getting a lot well. of love. Thanks. Thanks. Should I give him another hug? Yeah, I think you should. Best I thanks. think Come you here. should. Yeah. Everybody. That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> Deborah says the man can delegate. Hi, Aaron Shepard. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Taria is logging in. Taria Williams. Hi. Delegation is leadership, by the way. It is. Mm -hmm. Brian, if you want to raise up leaders, you have to train them to do your job, right? So right. It, when I was in the Army, I knew that there was a possibility that I might go out one time and not come back. The, and right. so somebody had to be able to do your job if you weren't there. Yeah. And that's what good leaders do. They they train their replacement. Now, our wives are not our replacements. It's a little bit different in this yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we should be creating an environment where they feel comfortable leading also because they're going to lead just as much as we are. We're not at home all the time. They're not at home all the time. And so we have to be able to both lead. So just... To, to make sure we're getting the point. Can Hannah you Mitch please... Watching, yeah, hi, hi Hannah. Hannah. Can you guys please... Well, first, let me say hi to Michelle. She thinks you're funny, Brian. Of Michelle, course. Deborah, Lisa, <laughs> Edward. I haven't seen Edward in a while. Ooh, Teresa, Edward. Jennifer, Paul, Michael. Love when you guys tune in. Karen, I haven't seen you in a while. Make sure to like and share us and all that. Mm -hmm. So can you please... Oh, Heather says, I agree with Dave about needing the church to do more for men, mentoring other men. Oh my goodness, Which yes. means she agrees with me too. Absolutely. I agree with Dave, so so can Ryan. you please, if we're <laughs> saying men can delegate, if we're yeah. saying uh, a man can say, I'm not good at this, you make the decision. So then we're saying it's not providing. What is leadership? Can we just... Can you kind of encapsulate that in a thought? Yeah, you feel If it's fine. not doing it, if it's not necessarily making the decisions, what is it? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. Don't get annoyed. That's the Bible. We had somebody <laughs> ask. We're addressing a question, and she's saying, the man keeps deferring in terms of decision yeah. making. But we're saying it's really not about making the decisions. No, So it's then not. what is leadership for a man in the home? What, what does it look like? This is really going to sound weird. Okay. But... I view it as a hierarchical, at some point, there's got to be a tiebreaker. Yeah. I married a, a strong, successful, brilliant woman who compliments me well. I mean, she compliments me, but, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> in terms of having strengths I don't have. Uh, yeah. But at some point, there's got to be a tiebreaker. And so that the spiritual head of the house is going to be the one that, when there's disagreement in the married relationship about a significant spiritual issue or life issue, someone's got to make the call. Okay. That's... And I know that sounds extreme because it's... I think it's going to be rare, too, Brian. Yeah, I really do think rare. it's going to be rare. I can point to only a couple of situations where I've exercised my spiritual headship. I think if you're building an environment in your house where people can prosper emotionally and spiritually, 
those things just don't happen very frequently. Right. And even for and Dave Safransky. That's right. And my <laughs> wife is a very strong personality, and I love that about her. It's it's what I married. I. Yeah. It's what attracted me to her. And her legs also, but the <laughs> <Levine, laughs> personality. She's uh, watching, isn't she? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> she might be, but um, yeah, I love that about her. It's 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 encouraging to see uh, people like that who who are just strong personalities. They're, they they have a lot of self confidence, and she's strong in the Lord. So I love all those things about her. I don't see it as a weakness. I see it as something that strengthens us all. Do you agree, just for the men listening out there, in the quietness of their heart, do you acknowledge that it makes leadership harder to have a strong woman? No, I think it makes it different. I think it makes it different. Okay. And for those who know me know that I really don't struggle with self-confidence. Wait a minute. I, it's not an wow. area that I've struggled with. I in. don't know about that. For, for better or for worse, whatever it is, I'm confident in myself. And not in an, not in a in a bad way, I don't think. Although some people might disagree, but I I trust my wife. I I trust her decisions. I know that the majority of her decisions are going to support our family. You know, she's human. We're all human. We're all going to make a bad decision. We're all going to make a mistake. You just drive on. I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about the things that we did wrong, except to learn from them. We're gonna move on from there. I'm not gonna. I'm not keeping a scorecard. I can't do that because if I keep a scorecard, then someone's gonna keep a scorecard on me, and I don't like that score. Yeah. So, uh, a strong wife is just it changes things. It doesn't make it worse. Doesn't make it better. It's just different. And see, I, I honestly think it makes it easier being married to a strong woman. Easier. It's exhausting to have to carry the entire load. And I feel like we're a better team because she is strong and intelligent and assertive and, and has gifts that I don't have. And we both seek the Lord, and therefore we're both sacrificing for each other. You see what I mean? Like yeah. I, I think it would be harder to be with a, I don't know what the right word without offending everybody would be. but you know, Mealy. Mealy. Yeah, that would be harder. I think it's easier to be married to a strong woman who loves the Lord. I'd be curious, too, um, what our texture what kind of issues she's worried about that he keeps deferring to her if they're major things or if it's like can we get a new new couch I, this one is ratty i think we should get another one. Oh, i don't care yeah because yeah. you, you don't yeah <laughs> jane says we need to be able to make mistakes and not be afraid that forever getting the i told you so tanks it makes it easier as a husband of a strong strong woman yep. but in her strength she yields to the vision i set for our family Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I wish people could hang out with Pastor Tank's wife, Dee Dee. Yeah. She's no passive woman. She's a strong, intelligent, successful woman. And he can say that, and I, I think this makes a lot of sense in context to that. It, uh, he agrees with me again. Team Brian, thank you. <laughs> it makes it easier. I don't want to be difficult. He's setting the vision, Tank says. He's setting the vision. I don't want to be difficult. Why? But even you said when you were managing someone that was smarter or you know, stronger than you, it was hard. And the only yeah. way I can relate is, it's easy to parent my five, seven-year-olds, like when the teens are gone, it's easy. It, mm -hmm. the, you do what I do, you sit there, they hardly ever question, they're like, okay, we're going <laughs> we're going to the grocery store, okay, they all sit down in the van. Once they start getting old enough, now you're engaging questions about faith, yeah. and why, and agendas. So I just want to be... I want to be real because if I was a man, I could be out there thinking like, okay, well, I find it hard. My vision's challenged because I know I I question Len. Well, why are we going this way? Does that make sense? Did you pray about it? It's different to deal with a woman that says, oh, okay, babe, I, yeah, that's great. As a human, it has to be more challenging. But see, the way you were asking those questions is super disrespectful. Are you sure? I'm okay, I was no, trying to is. make a point. I Quite, know you are, but okay. see, I, I want a wife who will Question, privately... Question, period, as opposed... Privately, not... We're not, private. I, we're I, saying privately. Okay, fine. In front of the kids, but whatever it is. No. To okay. be able to ask me questions, to go, okay, honey, you think we should do that? Why do you think that? Have you thought about this? Yeah, that's you know, harder think, than just, okay, let's go. No, no, that's making a good decision. Oh, okay, okay, good. Like, you, like the Bible talks about that in, with uh, a wise man has many counselors. Like, the idea of making a decision in a vacuum without your spouse is crazy town to me. Like, I want her to go, yeah. are you sure? Not, are you sure about that? I don't know. That sounds pretty crazy. I want to, so why do you think that? 
have you considered this? Like Sarah and I were talking about a work situation for her yesterday. We were going back and forth about some ideas on how she can address an issue. And we disagreed for a while. And finally, I came up with something where she was like, you know, I think I can work with that. Like we were challenging each other and it made it better. I don't want her to go, whatever you want, honey, I submit. That's weird. Look at you. You're mad at me. Because I, I don't think we're being honest. I think what it is challenging. I'll tell you, if I was a boss or in the, in places where I've worked with people, working with someone that's just as smart as me that will question my position makes me better, but it does present more challenges. Now I got to think through stuff. Now I got to be able to defend my position and you know, so it was all I'm saying is if you don't come into it knowing, yeah, it is difficult. Maybe I need to lean more on the Holy Spirit or get guidance from other mm -hmm. men. Because then it's just, you're telling people, no, it's good, and, it, okay. and it's easy. So what do you tell the people, the men? I mean, even in the quote we said, the woman said, yes, it's easier to deal with someone that's weaker. Okay, but so if you want a better team, you yeah, want to. Yeah, if you're a bully, to, if you're a bully. You think so? But yeah. in, in fairness, and perhaps D Dave can and, and Ron can, can feel this way too, hopefully, so I'm not in the, under the bus alone. Uh, I used to struggle with that. Yeah. Sarah and I used to struggle with that. And the minute we both got over ourselves and figured out that the other one is good at something, like when I figured out that Sarah has more di better discernment than me and is wiser than me in some areas yeah. and has better vision for like certain projects and stuff, the more I got over myself and yielded to that strength oh, yeah. of hers, the better we were as a team. And then vice versa. So yeah. now with that mutual respect, like the idea that, it's re it would be crazy in our relationship if I'm like some sort of dictator. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Did you I guys struggle that. with that early I on? Get that. Uh, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. And and I'm as I'm hearing your talk, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking if the husband is confident in his own self and trusts his wife that she's got his best interest at heart, then, you know, if I were Len and you came at me with questions like that, it would be great because, yeah, I have thought about that, or no, I didn't think about that. Yeah, great point, honey. You're, and yeah. and and that would make us stronger. I'm not like in a work situation. I might be worried and concerned that oh, she wants my job. She's yeah. trying to. Oh, you know, I see. I see. Where you know she's not undermining me. She wants the best for our family, right. which is what I want. So let's make a good decision. Sarah just dropped the mic here. I wanted to read her comment. What, it's amazing. Is that what that is? It's amazing. <laughs> she's, no, no, no. It's actually, she said submission and obedience are two different things. Submission is an attitude of deference to the desires and mandates of the other. One can have a submissive attitude and not obey, such as Peter in Acts 2. One can obey and not have a submissive attitude. I believe we need to have a more holistic teaching in the church of what submission to one another means within marriage. If the two of you agree that it's important, setting the vision is necessary. I truly think the church has focused too much on submission being about the little things and not about the vision. Yeah, and, and you know what, to, to your point, Sarah, people never get to this, right? Because when you look at Ephesians 5, the, the submission verse is verse 22, wives submit to your own husbands. Verse 21, what does it say? Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then it specifically talks about what that looks like for men and women. I, I think it's, I think it's an abused concept in well, a lot yeah. of marriages, right? Yeah. It's so a lot of, in the past, a lot of Christian males have used that to get their way, in whatever they wanted, and that is not what a marriage is about. Nope. And when I was newly married, I was the smartest guy in the room for a long time, and. <laughs> It, it did not serve me well, right? I was cocky, and I knew everything. So uh, time has given me some wisdom and a few uh, shoes coming at my head. You know, like, whoa, whoa, did I say something wrong? Well, of course I said something wrong. I was being a moron. Um, a moron. moron. Like moron. So yeah. I think, especially for newly married couples, they're going to make a lot of mistakes in this area because they know it all. Yeah. They they have this. A lot of people think because you're both Christians, your marriage is going to be fine. There's going to be no troubles. I thought true. that. Yeah. Not true. Not right. true at all. So, as time goes on, you kind of get your mojo in a in a way. You know the the, the way yeah. that you work. So if you're being mentored as you go along by men and and women are have female mentors as they're newly married, I think the success rate is probably going to be a lot higher because. A woman can say to another woman, I don't think you're approaching this correctly. Yes. And a guy can say to a guy, you're being a moron. 
And that's yeah. the way guys talk to each other. Right. I think you're just being an idiot about this, and you need to kind of back off and let your wife be your wife instead of telling her what to do at every step. So this submission concept is, has been frequently abused, so I think it's frequently avoided now because we just don't want to breach the subject. Yeah. Right? But in a marriage that is going to stand the test of time and be a positive thing for everybody and be godly is going to go through this. It's, it's just one of the things that we go through. But we breach these subjects here on Brian and Janelle over time. Yeah. Time for Woo! ourselves. Like that? So uh, don't forget, <laughs> we, we got to wrap this up. Uh, the man's telling me we got to wrap this up, so we better stop before I get in trouble. Uh, we're we're going to have to ask you, though, to share, like, comment. This con con conversation can continue here when the video finishes. Uh, and remember, the more you like and share this, the more we can spread these types of discussions. Ones we should be having but don't in the church today. If you help us spread them, that'll happen, okay? So uh, I think that'll do it today. Thank you, Dave Safransky. Yeah! <laughs> that was a good salute, Dave. You must, Thank you. You're a military man. I've, I've been there. I've saluted a few.